So we now have the logical model and as we have discussed in the course before the logical model directly implies the contents of the database. In other words every entity type on the logical model will become a table in the relational database. We know that. And we have also mentioned that uh, instead of us having to create the necessary SQL to create all these tables instead of us having to write all the SQL to create these tables, Oracle Data Modeler can automatically generate the required SQL. We've talked about it briefly. So that's exactly what we are going to do now. At least that's the next step that we'll be carrying out. In order to facilitate that though, we have to do a few small things on top of the relational model. Right? So the process is going to be, we have the relational, uh, I'm sorry, on top of the logical model. The process is going to be, we have the logical model and we want to generate the SQL scripts. But before we do that, we will create something called as the relational model from the logical model. And then we'll do a few small things within the relational model and then generate the SQL. Okay, so that's the broad thing that we are doing. So let's take a look at what's going to be done right now. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is use the logical model and generate what is called as the relational model. Think of this as an intermediate step before we generate the SQL to put it into Apex for creating the tables. Okay, so in order to do this, uh, all we need to do is get into our logical model and then we see that there's this button which is like two uh, greater than signs together. That's called the forward engineering button. In other words, it will automatically take the relational uh, logical model and create the relational model. So we click on that button and then it brings up this uh, screen, uh, this pop-up window that we see here. And on the pop-up window, you see there's this button that I have highlighted. Uh, you click on that button and out comes this. It's a relational model. Now, don't confuse this with the entity relationship diagram. This is not an entity relationship diagram. It's a seriously modified version of the diagram, although it looks very close to an entity relationship diagram. This is a relational model and just so that we don't confuse this with the logical model, they have given uh, the uh, each of the entity types, they've given it different color and so on. Okay, so don't confuse this with the logical model. Okay, so important point is this is a relational model. It looks like an ER diagram, but it's not one. Okay, it has fairly similar notation to ER diagram, but the meanings are different and we are not even going to go into those meanings because we don't have much to do with that. And another important thing is it might look as if this diagram has key migration, whereas I had earlier said don't use key migration, okay? Uh, but this diagram actually doesn't have any key migration, so don't worry about it, okay? So what we are going to do is to take the logical model, uh, generate the relational model, and do a few small things on the relational model, uh, essentially on the way to generating the SQL. So we're not getting too deep into the uh, relational model. Okay, so completely ignore the notation on this diagram. Don't worry about it. So that's the relational model. So the next thing we're going to do is uh, on the so you can get to the relational model by looking at the uh, on the left hand side on the navigation, you see relational model. And that's where you see this model. Okay, it happens to be uh, not the logical model which is on top. This is a relational model. Okay, so the so that's the logical model. Okay, and in the logical model, uh, if you look at sales order, for example, by double clicking on it, and if you look at the attributes, you see that there is an attribute called customer ID. Although we don't see customer ID in the sales order entity type itself. That is because it's a one-to-many relationship with customer and therefore customer ID is an automatically created foreign key. Okay, whereas on the relational model you see customer ID here as an attribute. Okay, so that's one of the small differences between the logical model and the relational model. Okay, now notice the, the name that 
has been given to customer ID it says customer underscore customer ID okay now we could leave this as it is except that if we then go on to build our application generate forms and so on uh, the form uh, you know on the form the field name will be called customer underscore customer ID customer space customer ID which doesn't look very good we would like that to appear simply as customer ID okay so what we want to do this is not mandatory but you could do this is to go and change the name of for example let me okay so the name of for example this field foreign <coughs> foreign key field customer underscore customer ID we would like to change this to just be customer ID okay so notice that there is an F before that to indicate that it's a foreign key so what we want to do is to take a look at this diagram and change the names of all the foreign keys to be uh, to remove that prepended entity type okay so those are all the foreign keys whose names we will want to change okay so on the relational model we are going to do three things first is we are going to change the foreign key names okay just like I just discussed uh, and the second thing we are going to do is to make every primary key column auto increment remember we had earlier said that we are going to make every primary key column an integer column okay now what we want to do is to make it into auto increment so that we don't have to bother about you know giving those numbers when we create the appropriate entity types the system will automatically start uh, with some number and then keep on incrementing the number as we create more uh, more rows in the table so this is a very convenient feature so that's what we're going to do here and then what we are also going to do is to uh, check the names of the foreign keys not the not the column name itself but behind the scenes there is something called as a constraint and the constraint has a name we'll show all of this don't be panicked and we want to check the size of those and reduce the characters if needed okay notice that these are things that you do only on the relational model you cannot do these on the logical model okay so understand that very carefully because sometimes what happens is people come back to me and say hey, professor I'm not seeing these things at all uh, I'm doing it but I'm not seeing it well if you're doing it on the logical model you won't see it you have to do it on the relational model okay so first take a let's take a look at how do you change the foreign key column names okay so what we're going to do is to uh, open up the sales order entity type okay and then on the screen you now see here customer underscore customer ID what we want to do is to change this to customer ID okay so what we are going to do now is to just go on the right hand side right here okay and change the name to just customer ID okay now this step is optional if you don't want you can you can avoid this uh, but I would suggest that you do this it's not a big deal you can do it okay so we want to do the same thing to uh, the other foreign keys in our diagram so for example uh, in this one we're going in order item we're going to change sales order ID instead of sales uh, order sales order ID we just want to make it sales order ID and then we also want to change uh, product underscore product ID to just product ID and in uh, this entity type product category membership we want to change again product product ID to just product ID and change the product category uh, product category ID to just product category ID and finally in the last entity type change it to parent category ID okay so those are all the changes we want to do here okay uh, now let's take a look at what is auto increment okay so take a look at this entity type it's got customer ID okay so what we want is every time we add a new customer in our application because remember this is going to become a table called customer 
and right now initially the table will be empty but as we keep adding customers we want to give a customer id to every customer that we create okay now by default what will happen is we will have to enter the customer id we'll have to make up some number to enter customer id we have to make sure that the number is unique okay now to do that manually would be quite a pain it would be quite a problem because you have to keep remembering what was the id i gave earlier now i have to give a new id that has not been given before doing all of these manually is a problem but what we could do is tell the database hey when i first create a customer make the number as 1 when i create the next customer automatically make it 2 and so on and so forth so that after that point we don't have to worry about customer ids at all okay so all that is what we achieve through auto increment okay uh, same thing for every other primary key okay so let's take a look first at customer let's open up in the in the relational model not in the logical model okay so we open up customer by double clicking on that entity type and then double click again on customer id right here okay so we double click on customer id again and uh, that brings up uh, so that's uh, we are double clicking on customer id it brings up this screen okay so on this screen we first uh, click on the general tab here look in the general tab and uh, if you look a little bit below okay you see that there is this thing called auto increment and it's got a check box we want to check that box okay so we select auto increment in the general tab and then you can check that check box auto increment but you can also do additional things on the auto increment for example if you don't want it to start with 1 and increase by 1 each time you can you know make it start with 10 and increase by 10 each time or whatever you like that's really there's no point in doing any such thing but uh, if you have the fancy you can do that okay so that uh, does the job uh, it's showing you that you can do other things okay so what we want is for all the primary keys which are all integers in our model we want to make them all into auto increment now be very careful don't touch the foreign keys we are only doing auto increment on the primary keys if you do auto increment on foreign keys it will be seriously messed up um, and it will be very hard to fix later okay so don't do that okay so we repeat this process for all the primary keys leave all the foreign keys alone we are only handling the primary keys at this point okay uh, the other thing we want to do is to fix the foreign key names okay so if you increase the size of each of your entity types on the relational model okay you see that for every foreign key there is a name here okay so it says fk underscore customer id uh, underscore customer id uh, 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 whatever okay so it's got the foreign key okay the foreign key uh, this is sorry this is the primary key so here is a foreign key uh, you see the uh, name of the foreign key okay this first entity type has no foreign keys here there's one foreign key and you see that the foreign key has uh, the foreign key const constraint has a name okay now uh, in the oracle database there is a, a limit of 30 characters on these constraint names okay now sometimes what happens is that the constraint names that the system generates are longer than 30 characters and that causes a problem and we want to fix those things okay so here here i'm just showing you all the foreign keys which exist on our diagram okay so now what we are going to do is to uh, just double click on this foreign key name here okay so that opens up this uh, uh, this uh, pop up okay and within that we select here foreign key okay so and then once we go on the right hand side we see the name of the foreign key okay this uh, you see the name here so what we have to do is to uh, 
you know if the name is more than 30 characters long we are supposed to uh, we can double click on the name and just make it slightly shorter okay I'll just make sure that you don't give uh, you know the same name to many foreign keys that's all to more than one foreign key okay so we want to reduce the number of characters in all the foreign key names which are longer than 30 characters okay so the first table has no foreign key the second has one foreign key uh, there are two foreign keys etc okay so for example in order to see how to change the name so here we open this up okay and then click on foreign key right here okay and then you see here the foreign key name okay so this name is pretty long so we can then uh, double click on it and edit it and reduce the length of the foreign key okay so that's what we want to do for all the foreign keys on the relational model okay so at this point what we have done is we have taken the logical model transformed it into a relational model and then done a couple of tweaks on the relational model okay the tweaks we did were we first uh, made all the primary keys auto increment okay and then we changed the names of all the foreign key attributes to remove the leading name of the entity for example customer underscore customer ID customer underscore customer ID so the customer was appearing twice we removed the initial customer and just made it customer ID we did that for all the foreign key attribute names and then we went on and changed the names of all the foreign key constraints to be shorter than 30 characters okay so at this point our relational model is ready for uh, being converted into a database script which we will look at in our next video